Okay, hey Honors Chemistry, I just wanted to provide a short video on scientific notation for those of us who may have not done it in a while or may have forgot. So I'm just going to show a couple of examples and talk about how we write them with significant figures and that should help us out. So let's say I had this large number, 1743.98 milliliters. If I'm looking at this right now, this number has one, two, three, four, five, six sig figs. So just as like a quick review, these are all non-zero, so I have six sig figs in this number. If I want to write something in scientific notation, you typically want, and I'm going to say for scientific notation, so for psi note, for scientific notation, we typically want the ones place, a decimal point, everything else, times... 10 to some power. And we always write our numbers in scientific notation 10 to times 10 to the something. And that power is how many times I've moved the decimal point to the left or to the right. So for example, for this one, I want to go to the ones place, which is to the left. If I move the decimal point over to the left, I'm going to make my exponent positive. So I'm moving it how many places to the left to get to the ones place? Remember, this is um, to make it a ones place. I know this is the thousands place, but I want to move it so I make at least just a ones place. So look at what I do. One, two, three. I went three to the left. Because if I do that, I move this decimal place over three spaces to the left, and I'm making a ones place out of my number. So if I do that, I'll have 1.743.98. Now I need the, and this is, this is the ones place that I was talking about, and this is everything else, and now I need that times 10 to the. How many times did I move the decimal point to the left? Three times. So that means my exponent is going to be positive 3 times 10 to the third milliliter. So if I want to express 1,743.98 milliliters in scientific notation, I would write 1.74398 times 10 to the third milliliters. Now, another way of doing this is if I want to make my number bigger than I have it. So right now I made my number smaller, right? I went from 1,743. I turned it into 1.74398. We want our numbers to have at least a ones place. So that, that's how I'm moving my decimal point, to get a ones place. So what if I have a number like this? Let's say my number, and I'm still keeping this template for scientific notation. Let's say my number was 0 0.00579 centimeters cubed. Okay? So I have 0 0.00579 centimeters cubed. I want at least a ones place, everything else, times 10 to the nth power, okay? Now, my decimal point's over here. The first time I can get this decimal point to give me a number in the ones place is if that decimal point was after the 5. So I'm going to move this decimal point over towards the 5. 1, 2, 3, right? When I'm moving the decimal point, I'm moving it next to another number. I moved it to the right three times. And I'm going to show you where that comes up in this. So now I have 5.79. It looks like I have it up here. So I have my ones place is 5.79. Don't forget, this is the ones place. This is everything else. Times 10 to the... I moved it to the right three times. I made my number bigger but it's originally a smaller number. 0 0.00579 is smaller than 5.79. And because of that, I need to use a negative exponent. And what exponent do I use? However many places I move to the right, I'm making it negative that many spaces. So it's times 10 to the negative third centimeters cubed. Okay? That is just a quick example. Let's just do one or two more to make sure that you get this. If you get this, you could turn off the video easily. But I want to still make sure that you understand what I mean. So let's do a number like 
379.1, uh, let's call it a joule, right? And you'll learn about a joule way later. It's a unit of energy. So I have 379.1 joule. I want to put the decimal point to a number that I can make a ones place. And notice that if I move the decimal point to the right, I'm not making something in the ones place. I'm actually making it larger. That's not going to work. If I have a large number greater than 1, I have to move the decimal to the left. So if you want to make a, a note of that, for numbers greater than 1, right? I'll say greater than 10, actually. For numbers greater than 10, I want to move to the left. For numbers that are less than 1, I'm going to move to the right. Right? So, I mean, this is to the decimal point. For the decimal, for numbers that are greater than 10, I'm going to move to the left. For numbers that are less than 1, I'm going to move that decimal towards the right. So this is a number that's greater than 10. I'm going to move the decimal to the left. How many spaces? However long it takes me to get a number in the ones place, where I have a number, then the decimal point. So 1, 2. I move this to the left two times. So I'm going to rewrite this number as 3.79, so the ones place, everything else, times 10 raised to the, what power is it? I moved it to the left two times. I made my number smaller, but it's a large number. So should I have a positive exponent or a negative exponent? If I moved it to the left two times, I should have a positive exponent that's 2. So times 10 to the second joule. I'm going to do one more example that's a small number. So let's say some of your measurements that some of you were taking on your quiz, 0 0.035 milliliters. All right, that was one of the answers to our quiz questions at part C in question number two or three. So I had 0 0.035 milliliters. I want to represent this in scientific notation. So my number is less than one. For sure, 0 0.035 is less than one. So in order for me to do this, I need to bring this decimal point over not once, but twice to the right. I'm going to the right twice, two to the right. I'm doing that because I want to put my decimal point next to a number to make it in the ones place, or to have one number to the left of the decimal point. If you don't understand what I'm meaning by ones place, what I mean is I want a number that's one number to the left of a decimal, okay? So now I have my number is 3.5 here, so three, everything else, Five. So one's place is three, everything else is five, times 10 to the, and how many times did I move it to the right? Well, I move it to the right two times. If I move it to the right, and I made this number bigger than it actually is, if I move it to the right, my exponent is negative, times 10 to the minus second milliliters, okay? So I'm hoping that you understand how to do that with simple numbers. This is super helpful when you do a calculation and you have to make the number have less significant figures than your calculator. So let's say something weird happened and I had a number like 2,257 uh, meters, all right? I got 2,257 meters. But in doing my calculations, I realized that I needed only three, I want three sig figs. So I, I need three sig figs. When doing my calculations, I realized that my least precise measurement was three sig figs. How do I turn a number that's four significant figures into something that's three significant figures? Well, you pretend like there's a decimal point at the end of every number, right? Even if it's not there, you pretend like it's there. This has four sig figs. I could move the decimal point back 
to give me a number in, in scientific notation, and then I could work with that. So let me do that. I'm going to tell you that I, I, I want to try and get this into three significant figures. I can move this over one, two, three. I move to the left three. So if I move to the left, is my exponent positive or negative? Should be positive. So my decimal point is between the two and the other two. So the ones place is two, two, five, seven. That's my ones place, that's everything else, times 10 to the, well I moved to the left three times. So my exponent, and I said it's positive already, times 10 to the third meter. Now, how can I change this into a number that has three significant figures? Well, I couldn't round up here. If I did round up here to get three six figs, I would have 2,260, right? And that's, a, that, that's, sometimes some of us can't do that with the rounding. But with the significant figures here, or with our scientific notation, I could round the 0.257 of the 2.257, I could round that five up to six. So instead of this being 2.257 times 10 to the third meter, if I wanted three significant figures, I could erase the five and seven and just write 2.26 times 10 to the third. And there is my desired three sig figs, had that been the problem where I need to have less significant figures. So I'm hoping this video was useful. Please make sure you use this if you are confused or concerned about writing scientific notation. I will see you tomorrow.